So if we look at the future of SAFE and we're trying to predict its price, I think that there is a lot of things that you have to consider. And we're trying to predict what is going to cause the price to go up and what's going to cause the price to go down. I think there would be, there's the potential bad things that could happen. And there is the good things. Like very, very simple. And good things as an investor want to load up on your bag so that you have a good bag so that you can take profits when the price goes up, not just so you can be happy that you have a nice bag and then not sell, right? It's so you can take profits. Like that's why everybody's doing this is to take profits, right? And then the potential bad things that happen, if something really bad is happening, then, you know, you might want to consider that selling could be an option if it's going to cause the price to go up or down. And I also know that there's anticipating what everybody else is going to do and, and like doing the opposite is also a good motive when it comes to this. So for SafeMoon, I'm just going to put pros and cons down on each side um, of possibilities that are happening. So we've got the pros right here and we're going to write some of the pros is they had a massive name. Tons of people know about SafeMoon. They had a huge reach. A lot of people, it was their first entry point into DeFi. They have a lot of money, even though I, I don't know where they got their money. Some people might say that they got it from the swap partners or from the tax, but the V2 tax didn't come till way later and the swap partners didn't come until way later. And by, by before either of those things had come, uh, John and the team had had $5 million to invest in his mom's company, $2 million to buy a house, I meant millions and millions, over 10 to $15 million of dollars has, you know, they were spending that we could see that was visible at the point before they had had all those profits coming in from the swap partners. But either way, they have a lot of money to spend. They have the ability to hire, because they have a lot of money, they have the ability to hire high quality people. Um, other pros might be that, you know, networking, there might be certain people that want to work with SafeMoon, potentially, mostly only not because it's achieved anything except for a bunch of people buying in, but because it has a ton of people that know about it, that they basically might be able to get those people to get. Everybody wants eyes on their own projects. So, you know, that's what happens with the SafeMoon Swap Partners. SafeMoon team is making money off of promoting other projects to the SafeMoon army. Like it's as simple as that. And you know, you might have other pros and that's totally okay. If you guys wanna put your pros down in the comment section, I'm sure you can think of a ton of different things that you probably consider a pro. I'm gonna go over to cons and this is just realistic, right? If I was to, if I was to remove all my emotions and just say, hey, I wanna make money in this and what do I need to look at? Which is how all, everybody should be doing this. You shouldn't be coming into this with any emotions or moon or any biases. It's just, I wanna make money. What's gonna make this go up? What's gonna make this go down? And can I make money off this project? That's the only, that's the only way you should be thinking about this. I promise you that's anything else beyond that is going to cause you to have a bias, right? Cons are not so great. The cons are that the price is way down. And the reason that's a con is because it seems like the number one utility for projects is FOMO, is that initial pump up. And it's after after it goes down, it's very rare that you see it skyrocket again past that all time high. SafeMoon has seen an insane all time high and it's 90 something percent down. That's just a con that when people are deciding if they wanna invest in SafeMoon, if they go look at the chart, and I know that we've created all these new charts and maybe, maybe that's a pro is that, you know, by keep transferring to these new V2s, the charts don't look as bad, even though they've only gone down even with the new charts. And I can try to say that in a positive way if you want, but it's just the reality of it is that if you look at the charts, it just doesn't look good. You can blame Bitcoin, you can blame anything else we want. That's fine, you know, price is way down. People go look at that. That doesn't scream opportunity, right? That's all I'm saying. Accusations of fraud from like a, a famous person, right? So a major YouTuber, CoffeeZilla, who has had Mr. Beast on his channel, who is famous covering the FTX, he's not like a small person, has basically accused SafeMoon of being a scam and John Caroni of being uh, fraudulent and stealing from the liquidity pool and showing evidence that heavily indicates towards that regarding the blockchain and regarding the timeframes that John had money, the fact that those timeframes, he wasn't gaining money. This is all about money, guys. This isn't about emotions. Like remember, this is not about your emotions. This is about money. So there's accusations of fraud. So that's to me, like that's something that accusations of fraud is something that I would consider is that if they, SafeMoon did release any good products before they had this community behind them, this large amount of people who were able to push stuff. Now they have a, a bad reputation being tied to them uh, of being accused of being a scam and a fraud. And a lot of that stuff actually turns out to be true. So even if they start to release products, it's always gonna be underneath this cloud of being seen as a scam or a fraud by outside of the SafeMoon believers. People just think of SafeMoon and what they've heard about it, and that's just not the best light. That's just this is just realistically approaching your investment. More cons is that the team keeps leaving. 
the old team left, Ryan quit or got fired, whichever one happened first. The new team that was with John on the SafeMoon32 podcast, and it seemed like just a couple of buds hanging out with uh, SafeMoon Jonas saying that he used to watch FUD videos, but now that he's on the inside, he can see that there's nothing to worry about. They all just left. Joshua Chilcutt, the one who said that, you know, we've we've went from what can we take to what can we give, which I was like, why in the world would you say something like that? I'm glad you did, but oh my God, I always say this. If there was one thing I would write down, don't say this in the SafeMoon32 podcast, what that we've gone from what can we take to what can we give it was like holy cow there is just like no self-awareness or ability to read the room with your investors to know what things you should and shouldn't say true i mean the the fact that all of the people that we've hired don't need to be here kate doesn't need to be here anisha doesn't have to be here i don't we, we can all go sketch can't doesn't have to be here we can all go get jobs we can all go get jobs anywhere else making more money than what we've taken on here yeah but we've chosen to be here because we believe in you and we believe in SafeMoon and the army. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, like that's a testament in and of itself. And that was an aha moment for me. So they're all gone as well. And the team keeps leaving. That doesn't exude confidence in the project. When John's brother leaves, the old team leaves, the new team leaves, and we can make all kinds of excuses and turnovers are normal, right? And it's, it's possible that everybody just found a better job, but it doesn't scream, this is the best project that I wanna be a part of because it's about to explode and it's gonna change my life forever, right? That doesn't scream that, it kind of screams, they're wanting to get away from Satan and, and uh, I'll try to provide a potential reason that they might want to be leaving is because they don't like the heat that's coming their way because of the reputation of Satan, because of the accusations from Coffeezilla that they are, it might be like they just don't want to be considered being as part of a scam and that they don't want to say that as they're leaving. There was leaked screenshots of Satan Jonas saying that he's not allowed to even like look at his DMs or open anything, which that's like shocking to me. That makes me feel like there's something missing. And any time like, there'd be fun or a new YouTube video or something, you know, it kind of worried me a little bit. I'd let me, you know, talk to my friends, like, shoot, did you see this? You know, like, but still safe moon, but you know, like, what about, the, and then now, like, that I'm here. Behind the scenes. And we, I have a clear view. Now, like, I see that stuff, I send it to Hayden, I say, LOL, check this out, you know, cause like, <laughs> cause we know what's going on. Yeah. We can't talk about everything, but it's possible they just found better jobs and maybe they didn't like the heat they were receiving from all the fudders or whatever you want to call it. But it's also just possible that they didn't like what they saw. They didn't believe in what they saw. That's something you have to really consider as an investor, right? It's not time to just say, oh, I just want to believe in this no matter what and make excuses for anything. Like if you really want to do that, that's fine. But just know that you should definitely not be helping anybody else think that way because it's completely unreasonable and un illogical way to think. And it's only going to help you lose money and not be able to tell what's going on. On if you just assume everything's good and anything bad is not a big deal like that's you're always going to miss what happens right and we've seen that happen in the past so the team keeps leaving the team has taken from the liquidity kyle used the remove liquidity function if any of you guys don't know what you're doing go get kyle's address you can find it look it up on vsc scan make sure you go to the right tab look at the start of safemoon right and see the remove liquidity function being used at an excessive rate and then you can also see that that same liquidity function being used to pay ben phillips and many of these other youtubers while he was on a ama as co-ceo kyle Nagy with john caroni using the tokens he pulled out of the liquidity to pay influencers to pump SafeMoon while he's a co-CEO with John Caroni on an AMA while they're talking to Ben Phillips on that AMA about how Ben Phillips is going to be reaching out to his friends that are famous to tell them about SafeMoon. And it's just like, dun, 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 dun. It's like uh, is it starting to is it starting to click a little bit right there? We're like, oh, maybe John knew. If there is an answer to that, I would like to hear it, but the blockchain just seems to indicate there is not a good answer for that, right? So the team did take from the LP, Kyle did. Kyle apparently gave Thomas money out of that. And the worst part of it all is that it appears that the money that John got, that 10, 20, 30 million dollars, appears to have come out of the BitMart deal, um, either through the liquidity that was supposed to be collected on BitMart to be put in the pancake swap, and or the migrations of the Safeman liquidity. And instead of migrating it, they uh, used the BNB for a buy, and then they took the safe moon and sold it uh, over the counter to Bitmart, and were able to take profits off of that. And John is not willing to give any answers on this, and it's just been like lips sealed. Do not explain this to the investors, even though it's the worst possible fud that you could have. Is that John's living a high life and paying for everything because he took out of the liquidity pool instead of because we succeeded? And it's like this would have looked a lot different if John was still living in his trailer and still we could see all that money going out, even 
if the money was being spent right and he wasn't living a lavish lifestyle with a $2 million house and another house and cars and watches and $3,000 backpacks and just living it up while his investors are down from the money that should have. That's the thing is if you take money out of liquidity pool, you're literally taking money from your investors. This is what a rug pull is called, right? If you start a project and you take the liquidity, you're taking your investors money. Even if you take all liquidity and you go and you say, I'm spending it and I'm spending money to pay for advertising and stuff, it's not your money to spend. And that wasn't part of the deal. And if you go look at the beginning of Safe Moon, it was all about being safely to the moon because the liquidity is locked and they're not going to touch it. So everybody was sold on the idea that the liquidity wouldn't be touched. And CoffeeZilla did a great job of basically bringing it to our attention that the liquidity appears to have been touched and in the worst way possible by the, the worst person possible. What we're trying to do is protect predict the future of SafeMoon, right? You can't just look at these cons and say, oh, that's bull and get all in your emotions and get angry, right? That's, if you're getting angry whenever I talk about these and you're starting to judge me and see me as biased and evil, it's probably because you have a biased perspective where you make excuses for John and you judge everybody who says anything bad about John. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to say that you are good or bad. I'm just saying that this is literally a perception that is just not within reality and it's it doesn't allow you to see reality if every time a negative thing comes out about safe moon and you make an excuse for it or you blame the old team and you make an excuse for john this perception is always going to not see what's happening when thomas said he wasn't leaving we said he was we said guys pretty sure thomas is leaving and they said nope it's if it doesn't come from an official source then it's not true and then thomas said i'm not effing leaving john said he's not effing leaving thomas left like a couple months later he was gone right so for the people that are trying to invest and do what it is that we're looking at right now, trying to make money. This is why we're here. This is why everyone's here. This is why the team is here. This is why Sapin was invented is because people are trying to make money. The most important information to have at that time was that Thomas was not actually staying there right he was leaving and he was pretending to be on the team and that they told their own investors that in order to save face which means that if there was an investors who were basically invested in thomas which many people really believed in thomas in the beginning they've been taught to hate him now if they believed thomas and they believed john that he wasn't leaving but if that was their selling point was if thomas left then they were way late to the party way late to the party because they ignored all the signs they assumed the best about the team they listened to the team and they didn't listen to the evidence that was right in front of their face it's extremely important because the signs are usually there of when it before some major event happens before say uh ryan leaves ryan was l saying all these things about there being problems between him and the team and you know i made a video you can go check that video out i didn't realize i did this but that day i made that video and some people were mocking me saying that I was pulling nothing out of thin air, that I was just making stuff up, that it was insane. And the reason they did that is because they were, once again, seeing through these perceptions of Safeman's always right, anybody who questions them is probably evil. And if that's your foundation, I promise you it's a delusion. I promise you it's not an insult, insult. it's just you need to take the glasses off and be logical. That's really all it is. No double standards. No, John gets the benefit of the doubt. Crypto control uh, is probably an evil paid fudder who's trying to steal investors who's only doing it for views. That's double standard and it's touch time to wake up for your own investment sake and for the effect that you're having on other people's lives, right? Do we want to approach Safeman from a logical point of perspective or do we just want to approach it from delusion and hope that that delusion pays off the team keeps leaving the price is way down the accusations of fraud the consistent pattern of over promising and under delivering i can see this to an extent but you also have to understand that people uh, invest on these ideas and what safemoon has been unfortunately is the selling of ideas that are never delivered on and we see this with operation phoenix with the wind turbines with being a currency in the gambia with almost everything they've only delivered on the smallest things that have no impact on the safemoon investors the swap only helps safemoon make money and many of the safemoon investors just lose money actually by buying into a lot of these swap partners whose launches end up being terrible and not doing well and not getting their reflections it's been an absolute disaster if the price was way down that wouldn't be you know too bad that happens to a lot of projects and that can happen even if you have a solid team but when you start adding the other things on top of it the accusations of fraud from famous public figures who have a history and are respected for reporting accurately on scammers that's something you can't just ignore that and try to make excuses for that that's delusional you have to consider this in your equation when you're looking at investing in Safeman's future and its price. The team keeps leaving. That's something you just have to consider. That does not exude confidence that the people on the inside see something so great that they just want to leave and go find another job. That does not scream confidence and this is the next amazing thing to me. Yes, there's potential realistic explanations for that, but the consistent pattern so far is that everybody who's worked with John has hated John or left. 
even his own brother. Putting a positive spin on that is once again putting those glasses on and being unreasonable and illogical. Team took the LP. So yeah, the team took the liquidity. Kyle took the liquidity. Thomas appears to have gotten paid from the liquidity. I don't think Hank took the liquidity. And John appears to have taken 20 to 30 million out of liquidity. And, and here's the most important thing that I would say when it comes to this mindset, these safe moon glasses, that if you put these things on, you're not gonna see right, is that if you're trying to understand what is the most logical explanation for why something is happening, it needs to have evidence because I can sit here and come up with an infinite amount of theories of why things could be happening. But if they have no evidence to support them, then they, they are less likely than the ones that do have evidence to support them. So if we look at the blockchain and we see that before SafeMoon had attacks, before V2, before they had any way of making money, before the swap partners that John spent 5 million on his mom's company, that he spent 10 to 20 to 30 million of Tether from BitMart during the time that many employees have come out and said that John knew, said that he, they were going to be put in a new tax bracket, that they were going to make a ton of money off of BitMart. The leaked screenshots of saying that John's wallet is the gay wallet, the devil wallet being linked to John's NFT, that all this work that CoffeeZilla and Bootsy and these people have done that connects it all. It paints such a heavy picture. It's not like a little bit of evidence that's being added a story on top. It looks heavily like John profited off the liquidity pool and that investors just were never told about it. Even though Safeman said, if we touch the liquidity, we will let you know, and it's a last resort, right? So anybody who says they don't owe you an explanation, stop making excuses for them, stop being delusional. If they took from the liquidity, they said they would let us know. We don't need to just infinitely make excuses for everything they do while they sit and hide, while they might have stolen hundreds of thousands of people's money, millions of dollars out of liquidity that you potentially could have sold out of, and they're not addressing these accusations. They're not coming out with a counter for it, they're not denying it, they're not explaining where they got their money. No one can say where Safeman got its money, other than trying to say that basically they built a time machine after they got the swap partners and the V2 tax, went back in time and gave themselves millions of dollars. That's, that would actually be the most logical explanation I could hear from a Safeman Maxi, other than the fact that John took from the liquidity pool. So it's very important to consider Safeman's history whenever we are looking to its future, because if somebody has a history of doing something, um, if somebody is consistently late to work, if somebody always shows up early to work, that's an important pattern to consider whenever you're uh, trying to anticipate the future of what is going to continue to happen. So if we look at SafeMoon's history, it just doesn't paint a good one. The team keeps leaving. They keep over promising on products that don't get delivered. Their communication is not good when it comes to those products not happening and they're not willing to answer any accusations they appear to have taken from the liquidity pool those are all very bad patterns which indicate to me that if john somehow did come across a bunch of money would john use that for the investors well based on the previous pattern he got 10 20 30 million and how how was that used for investors well, it didn't help the price. I mean, it was used for the investors in potentially in the sense that he invested in Emmanuel Nations Communications Group and potentially in the sense that we got the New York Times billboard and a little bit of advertising, but no buyback and burn, no money going to you, no money to the liquidity. It hasn't helped investors. So based on those reoccurring patterns that we see, there's no realistic way to get around this. It's not the most likely scenario that if John gets a ton of money that that's going to go to buyback and burn or that that's going to go into investors. It's possible, but the most likely scenario scenario based on the previous, you know, previously occurring patterns is that it's not going to happen. And if we're looking at the future of things that could cause the price to go up, if they release actual utility that is actually needed, right, something that actually uh, people adopt and want to use, right? You know, I heard somebody say in a space that there has been great utilities that have been released, but they have no exposure to it. So people don't care. Uh, projects that have amazing utilities. Um, so just, to me, it's like Safeman, you have everything you need. You had everything you need and you've just been blowing it. Opportunity after opportunity. And I think that the fact that they got a hold of that much money, probably why Safeman hasn't succeeded. But if they released a utility, create enough FOMO, that people, everybody who knows about SafeMoon, because a lot of people know about SafeMoon, start to buy back in, and the, the price, which has gone something like this, and is way down, way, way, way down, it's almost, it's almost like where it started. If the price starts to go back up, and let's just say it makes it probably here, and this is just purely speculative, you're welcome to disagree with me, that potentially, people might FOMO back in, even people who don't believe in SafeMoon, because you might buy into a project you don't like if you think you can make money off of it. I'm really trying to be realistic here, that I'm trying to create what I think is the actual real case, uh, real scenario where SafeMoon might actually potentially make money. If this scenario happened, 
then if there's the potential for the safe moon, people who know about safe moon to be like, oh crap, I don't want to miss out. I'll throw a hundred, I'll throw a thousand. And it has that, FOMO has that potential of causing it to, you know, go parabolic. And, but it just depends because this also requires all the people who have been buying all the way down in any whales to hold. Because as soon as whales sell or investors sell and take the price down, if the FOMO stops, the interest stops. It's like the number one utility is FOMO. And so as soon as that stops, people stop caring and the attention goes away. So unless there's a very consistent large amount of buyback and burn happening to the point that it changes, raises the price a lot, that it causes people to want to not miss that. And it's very consistent from an outside utility, which the team would have to be taking, promising to take that profit and use it for buyback and burn. Tons of projects have promised to do that. Evergrow, uh, other projects have said, oh, we'll take our profit, we'll use it for buyback and burn. And SafeMoon just hasn't promised that at all. It's just like, a, we'll use a fee and that fee is gonna be used to burn tokens. And like, that's like the best hope that you have. But there's not gonna be like any million dollar buyback and burn. None of that has been pledged. And that's because the SafeMoon community is not being put first with John's hands. He doesn't bleed SafeMoon, he bleeds John. So to me, like this is a real picture, but once again, we have to consider the history and the patterns of what that would be and the fact that there's all these whales and all these people that have been buying all the way down you have to incorporate this into your decision that if the price just starts to go up are they going to hold enough to actually allow the price to go up or is there going to be enough upward pressure to actually counter the whales or actually counter the uh the people that have previously bought and it would take some parabolic movement for something like that to happen i guess buying into an idea that you don't know that's another thing about statement is how many times have we bought into an idea we bought into operation phoenix we bought into all these ideas and then it ended up not even happening and I think we're just, we don't know how the tokenomics is going to work with the exchange. We don't know how the blockchain is going to work. And because of that, the belief that SafeMoon is going to be huge is based on an assumption that the team knows what they're doing when they've demonstrated a history of not knowing what they're doing and of failing. Just like in John's recent video where he said that he went up to that gaming guy and said, what do you think about putting your game on a blockchain? And the guy said, that's just not a good idea. And John said, well, that scrap, that makes everything that we're going to do not, and we have to scrap everything. So if having one conversation with a guy about putting a game on a blockchain, scrap all of blockchain ideas, that puts you in a scary position where it's like, it seems like all the decisions are coming down to one man and that one man might not be the best man for this job. I think in my perspective, he's demonstrated that he is potentially the worst man for the job. The main point of me making this video is just to let you guys know that people think like, oh, you, you, if you're a fodder, you know, you can't say anything negative. You're always so negative. It's like whatever, whatever information is coming out is just what I'm digesting. And I can't just put a positive spin on all those things. I can't be that dishonest with myself and with other people. If you can, if you've got glasses on and you've bought into an idea that you don't know, you've bought into a lie. And the lie is that SafeMoon's going to moon and you know it. And that's that's a lie. Nobody knows that. So if you believe that SafeMoon's going to moon and that you know it and that everybody should operate off of this assumption, then you bought into a lie. It might, but it might not. That's, that's the only thing you can know. That's the truth that we can know is that SafeMoon might, it might not. And the reoccurring pattern seems to indicate that it is less likely to moon than it is to do well. You also have to consider, are the lawsuits going to drain all their money? When projects lose their money, they call it quits and they dump the project. How much money does John have left? What's his ability to keep making money to pay for their roadmap? Once they kit their roadmap, if they don't continue to make profits, eventually they just have to call it quits and shut down. Many projects are running into these problems lately, so you have to be real. And I would just love to see a little bit of logic and reason within this community of actually being able to dissect actual possibilities both positive and negative everybody loves speculating on the positive and we just kind of accept it and I, I see people they're not used to it whenever somebody actually starts to question them about their positive speculation because they're so used to being around echo chambers where people just cheer them on for saying yeah you said something positive about safe mode the truth is is that if somebody goes on a killing spree and starts murdering people then the pattern is they're probably going to continue to do that that's not being a fudder that's just, they've created a pattern. I'm not I'm not creating negative things by pointing at this guy's murders. Now, if I look at the history of SafeMoon, I look at the team leaving and the undelivered projects and he's suing his mom and he took, they look, they took from the LP and it appears that he took from the LP and they spend money on themselves and they consistently don't deliver on what it is they promised and their communication always ends up being a lie. Am I a fudder for looking at that and saying, hey, you need to incorporate this. You know, if SafeMoon does go to the moon, uh, if SafeMoon does manage to go on this huge run up, I don't want to be responsible for convincing people to not do that. If SafeMoon only goes down to zero, I don't want to be responsible for people uh, convincing people to 
to buy while the price keeps going down. And many people are not concerned about the second, about the latter that I just said. So it's very important to know that you don't know the future, that we are gambling, and that everybody must include all possibilities and come to their own conclusions. You have to allow people to do that. If you're not allowing people to come for their own conclusions because you don't like that they're putting a that they come to a negative conclusion, and you're trying to control people's investments because you're more worried about your bag going down than you are about people making decisions for themselves and making or losing money. And you basically become a type of scammer in that way. And you're trying to control how people think so that your bag can go up. And you know, I get the idea that people feel like if you cover safe mode negatively that you're gonna cause the price to go down, right? And that's why you should only say positive things. Like I get where they're, they're coming from. However, it's very important to take off the glasses and put on the glasses that we don't like to put on, which is whatever is true, even if I don't like it, that's what I wanna know. That's the glasses you have to put on. So I don't care what's real, but I just wanna know what's real, even if I hate it. Even if it's the last thing I wanna believe, because I promise you, most of the time, whenever you are have glasses on, it's because those glasses have basically rejected something and it's the last thing you want to believe. Unfortunately, if you put the safe glasses on, the last thing you want to believe is that there is corruption or bad things going on or that your, probably, that your investment might not do well. But I promise you, it is the best way to mitigate risk when it comes to approaching your investment. Nothing's guaranteed. Somebody might blindly and stupidly hold on to a project that has all the worst signals and, and it goes up in price. There's no guarantee that it won't go up in price, but the probabilities and statistics of it is that it will not. So you might get lucky being dumb in the crypto space. You know, we're gambling and it's because we're gambling. However, you can mitigate a lot of that risk and, and get rid of a lot of those possibilities to really get screwed over if you start to study and do your research on what's happening and actually have an open mind and do not put on these glasses, these maxi glasses that people want you to just believe and hodl while they're the ones that are making tons of millions of dollars off of you, while whales are using you as exit liquidity while your dollar cost averaging and you could have just waited uh, the, a year and bought back in. So this is helpful true information for you that actually helps you in your life, not just for SafeMoon, but as we all grow into DeFi, you can move on to new projects. And there might be some project we've never heard of that's gonna be life-changing money for you because you learned to not buy into a maxi mindset that gets that negates all the bad information and just reinforces these beliefs within the community. Because I promise you that's not the best way to go. If you're worried about SafeMoon mooning, but you also see all these bad things, then play it smart save a little bit of money and throw it in when you think the price has gone down a lot. How much has the price gone down? What is the pattern of that? A lot. It's consistently gone down, which means that it's more than likely going to keep going down unless it reaches some floor that is very hard to go below. But that's just the reoccurring pattern. To say the price is going to go up is to say that the statistically improbable is about to happen. So it's very important to do that. And um, I know a lot of you guys are logical and I do thank you guys that have been like kind of supporting me in all of this because you get a lot of hate and attacking from both sides of people who just want you to think it's a scam and it's it's dead and anybody who believes in it is an idiot and people who think that if you talk anything negative about it that you're that you're a fudder and you're being paid. I haven't been paid a one single cent to FUD safe moon. The reason I'm making this video is like, look, I'm gonna start covering other projects. I'm gonna start covering other opportunities and I also just want the safe moon people to know that do watch me. My intention is not to make safe moon look bad. Unfortunately, safe moon did that itself. And all I'm doing is pointing to their behavior and saying, remember this and pay attention to this when you look at his future so that you can make the best decision for yourself. If you look at all that and you say, I don't care, I'm buying. That's fine. Like that's, I want every person to make their decision for themselves. I don't think you're an idiot. If you put 50,000 down on safe right now, that's your choice. And if you think it's going to the moon despite all this because you've been in this pattern before, then great, that's totally your choice. However, if you are trying to suppress information or you're judging people for what they're doing for their investments, you are playing a role in scamming people through dishonesty and through not allowing them to, not allowing the free flow of information because you wanna control what how people think about an investment. And that's just a terrible way to go about the investment. All that does, when you try to control and make people think positively about something, you end up creating the opposite. So many maxis that have pushed so hard, it, it's like, because you have those glasses on and because you're attacking people who are being logical, you create fudders. You create people who resent you because you won't even allow them to uh, logically look at it. And then there, there becomes this hostility between these two groups. And then what that creates is this complete inability to have a real conversation about the project in any kind of meaningful way on how the price might actually be affected, whether it's going to zero. If it's going to zero and we have heavy evidence to indicate that, we need to know that so that we can sell or so that we can pull out or if it has realistic potentials for the price to go up because of its history, because of the community, whatever it might be, you need to know that so you can make that decision for yourself. 
My goal with this channel is to provide you the information you need when you need it. I provided the information about the early team when you needed it. I provided the information about Ryan. Four hours before he quit, I made a video saying, I think there's something wrong. I I'm always trying to provide these early warning signals on the negative and the positive things. It's not my fault that Sapiens only put out negative signals. It's not my fault. If they put out all these positive signals, I would cover those too. I did cover those. Exchange and blockchain, end of 2021. I can't believe they're gonna do this. This is insane. It's we're, we're, we're into 2023 with, with neither right now. Apparently they have the exchange done, but they don't want to release it because of compliance reasons. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video maybe helps some of you guys try to start to think about your investment a little bit differently, just in a way that's more helpful to you to not lose money. I just don't want you to lose your money and I want you to make good decisions and I want you to have a positive impact on other people's lives. And you cannot do that with the SafeMoon Maxi glasses on that assume the best about SafeMoon and the worst about everything else. Take those glasses off and have a good day, you guys.